everybody, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, we are going to be doing an interview with a gentleman named Chris Klaus. Um, he actually is a guy that I met through the internet, through Instagram, um, but he has a really cool club down in Florida uh, where they focus primarily on Frontiers and Xterras. And they were actually nice enough to make me an honorary member, even though I'm in Indiana and they're in Florida. Um, but they just have a great group of guys and gals down there. A lot of cool people doing cool stuff with Nissan. So I thought it might be fun to kind of talk to him and, you know, kind of how he started the club and why he started the club. Also, he is originally a Hoosier, so he's from Indiana as well. So there's kind of a connection there. So anyways, I um, wanted to shine a little light on his club because it seems really cool. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this. It'll be a little bit different than normal because it's not necessarily just about overlanding, but it is about Nissans and stuff. So if you're into Nissans, this should be a good one for you. So before we dive into the interview with Chris, I just really quickly wanted to touch on my featured partners. Um, down in the description below, you'll find links to all these guys and girls. Um, they all have awesome stuff, either products or services or free magazines. There's just a ton of stuff that they offer. And again, they're just small guys like me um, that kind of want to get their name out there. So I love working with them because they're all just great companies with some great stuff. So uh, check them out down below in the description. I'm just gonna run through them really quick and uh, and then I encourage you to, to hit them up. So Overland Addict uh, is out of Arkansas, but you can buy stuff and he'll ship it anywhere. Um, pretty much, check the website. Um, but anything to do with Overlanding, he's got all the gear. Um, Last US Bags, again, Overland specific bags. Uh, awesome, awesome products I've got three or four of their bags and they're all awesome. I'm gonna actually have some new videos coming up soon where you see how I use all of them. Um, and then third, more Overland Expo. Again, this is a, a Midwest centric overlanding expo. It's gonna have 80,000 square feet of space this year coming up February, 2021. If you click the link below, it will take you to their Facebook page where you can pre-register for the event. So check that out. And then last but not least, Northology Adventures. Uh, again, she does this awesome free overlanding magazine. It's gorgeous, it's a digital magazine. Um, if you click through the link below, you can sign up on her website and get the free magazine. So that's it. So now we're gonna dive into the interview with Chris Klaus. Yeah, so as you just heard in the intro, today we are talking to Chris Klaus of the Florida Frontier Club. Welcome, Chris. Hello. Hello, Hoosier, kind of. <laughs> yep, Hoosier in Florida. Yeah. So you used to be a Hoosier, right? Like, that's, this is a weird connection, guys. So, like, I'm in Indiana, but I am in the Florida Frontier Club. I also have an Xterra, but I know Xterras are allowed. Like, they're in the same family. Um, but we are connected, I think, because you were a Hoosier originally, and then that's just kind of how you found me. So, like, how did you get to Florida? What happened? Okay, well, uh, <laughs> without going into too much detail, um, parents separated. <laughs> I lived in Tennessee for a year. I uh, got out of Indiana in a bad environment that I was in and uh, mm -hmm. thought, well, I can go back to Indiana and try to overcome that obstacle, or I can go to Florida and live on the beaches and try to experience right. Florida for a while, which that doesn't happen when you live in Florida. You work too much. And right. uh, stayed in Florida. Been here almost 15 years now. Uh, I bought my Nissan in 2014. Fell in love with Nissan. I had the, the big brands, Ford, Chevy, Dodge before. And just started being brand loyal. And as a whim, I created the Florida Frontier Club. I saw the Nissan Enthusiast page on Facebook. And I was like, well, you know what? Florida really doesn't have anything, so let me just see what happens. And after about a week, I had 50 people, and I was like, well, you know what? This might be something. Um, and then uh, just it went from there. And then as time progressed and everything, I found Nissan Nation Productions. I found all things overlanding. Realized, I was like, oh, my God, there's a Hoosier in Indiana doing the Nissan thing. That's phenomenal. So... Uh, <laughs> As for being in the FFC and being in Indiana, anybody who is a head of a organization, I guess, all things overlanding, Mike Nope and Nissan Patch uh, Collections and Nissan Patch Designs, David Boyd, Nissan Nation Productions, anybody that can come and share the love of the Nissan world and they're the, the main focus of that, they're they're welcome in. Nice. Yeah, very cool. So you, so it was 2014 when you got your Nissan, that's when you got into Nissan? 
yeah, um, like, I'd always like the cars. Like, you know, you watch uh, Fast and the Furious and you see the skyline. Yeah. And like, oh my God, that car's amazing. And then uh, yeah. I, I'd seen the Frontiers, the early models, you know, but being in Indiana, you know, you're the, uh, you're the country boy. So you're like, I got to have one of the big brands. And then you have yeah. one that was in them. Moved to Florida, met my wife. And then eventually her father, he bought a uh, 2010 LE. And I would go and help him do stuff. And I drove it one day. And I'm like, man, this is a really comfortable truck. And it handles really well. I like it. And uh, barring everybody's excuse for the turning radius, I was like, this <laughs> truck's awesome, you know. And when uh, it was time to part with my Dodge, um, I was like, you know what? I want a Frontier. And I stuck with it. And uh, it's, it's, just, it's a passion, man. Like, I love Nissan. Like, all things Nissan. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Cause I had a what kind of Dodge did you have again? I had the Dodge Ram 1500, and okay. when I when I traded it in for the Frontier, I believe it had 227,700 and some miles. It replaced wow. everything under the hood, and like any Dodge, all the paint was coming off from the top down. The one thing that I never had to replace, ironically, was the transmission. That's very ironic. Yeah, but I had to replace all the pistons, the rods, everything in that engine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was going to say, wow, that's really impressive that it ran for that long. But if you had to replace everything, I guess that kind of makes more sense. Yeah. yeah, I, my first Dodge, my parents had Dodges. Like, they leased some Dodge, like some Chrysler minivans and stuff for a little bit when we were younger. And then my mom had a, an Intrepid. And I always thought that car was like super sporty, which it was not. But I was like, when I was younger, I was like, oh man, this thing is so cool. Dodge Intrepid. And so then when I got older, I got a, mine was a 99 Dodge Dakota SLT with a 318 V8 in it. And I was kind of like, man, this thing's a kind of a beast. And it was kind of low because it was the SLT. So it was kind of like a little bit sporty and put some straight pipes on it and some bigger tires and some traction bars and stuff. And I thought I was, you know, hot shit. And uh, I had it until like 03. So for like three or four years, it had like 30,000 miles on it, but it was out of warranty on time. It was a four speed auto and yeah. the transmission started sticking at like 30,000 miles. Like you'd be on the highway. So, you know, commuting from college back home, I'd be on the highway and I'd be in third gear and I'd be going. Wah! And it would just, it wouldn't shift. My and so I got rid of that. It was junk. Yeah. My ass did that horribly. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that was bad. But then I got into a Nissan after that. Then I leased my Sentra after that. And that's what got me started. So it worked out. Yeah. The, uh, the Xterra you have, uh, like, it, it's, it's funny. Like we were talking about Xterra earlier. And one of, the, one of the guys in the club that I was talking about that has the, uh, he has a 2015 baby blue one just like mine. And mm -hmm. uh, you see that. And I'm like, God. I, I want an Xterra so bad just for the flip side of it, you know, like I want to have my, my truck and I want to have my, you know, my overlanding, my camping, something I'd really like to get into. Yeah. In Florida, you know, your overlanding is few and far between. So you have to yeah. either travel far up north or you have to take a beaten path somewhere and try to fight yeah. the obstacles. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. I guess that's true. Well, that's the funny thing is, you know, I mean, I'm a tourist when I go to Florida. Yeah. Like, it's not like I've ever been down there even with my truck to be like, where can I go? But it doesn't seem like there's a ton of places. Yeah, the only place that <laughs> off the top of my mind that I could think of, there's there's Inverness, there's a place in Ocala, um, there's, thank you, mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's other places down south and stuff like that. But, like, usually the majority of the time that I've been off-road, and it's not even overlanding, it's just off-road and whatever. It's sure. been citrus wildlife management area in Inverness. So. Okay. That's pretty cool. So is the Frontier the only Nissan you've ever had? Yes, actually, yeah, ironically, it is my first <laughs> Nissan, but it will not be my last. Um, once yeah. I drive this truck till the wheels fall off of it, my next venture is to either get a uh, Pro 4X or a Desert Runner. But money permitting, someday I hope, to, like I said, buy an Xterra and do some stuff with it. And I'm really hoping that Nissan re-releases the Xterra and doesn't go all banned with it. Yeah, no kidding. That's I've seen the new Terra, and like, it'll sell the soccer moms, you know, which that's yeah. fine. Like, make some money, Nissan. I don't have a problem with Nissan making money, but 
I haven't seen anything. I mean, the new Frontier does look pretty cool, and that's that kind of was what I was going to ask you about. Is there anything that you're excited about from Nissan that's coming in the future? And we kind of talked about Frontier a little bit, but what do you think about that? I know it's still up in the air, and like if you watch uh, NMP Nissan Nation Production, yeah. I know that David has touched on a lot of you know what could be, and mm-hmm. I really hope that like, and we were talking about this earlier. I I, I can't. It bothers me when people are so critical on Nissan that they're like, okay, well, they haven't updated the interior. They haven't done this, they haven't done that. It's a truck, right? If it isn't broken, don't fix it. It's worked right. since 04, 05, whatever it was, to now. Yes, it may need some updating, but I hope that Nissan pays attention to what people are saying. And mm-hmm. I hope that maybe, I would love to see it be a standard for lockers or um, for the differentials to be, I don't know if I should say updated or more off-road capable. Uh, no. The interior, I'm not so much worried about. It's a truck. Uh, there are a few things like, you know, I know that they're all doing standard backup cameras and GPS and stuff like that. But um, the interior really doesn't bother me other than the fact that, you know, if we have kids, you have kids. When you're trying <laughs> to put those car seats in the back of the Frontier, it's, it's very tight. Your, your space is very tight. I would like to see the cab stretched out a little further. So I'm hoping that in this new frontier that they do give give it the off-road package that I think it deserves, even maybe at a SV or a base model compared yeah. to what they have now. But at the same point, I I don't want them to go don't make it look like a car. Don't make it look like a van. Don't right. follow Chevy or Ford or Dodge. Like, stay original. Don't stay Nissan. Stay Datsun. You know, right. don't. I I don't want to see it yeah. like just become a a flop. You know. Right. But yeah, that's. It's funny that you say that about the interior too, because like so. Well, for one thing, I went from a 2000 Cherokee to a 2005 Xterra. If you've ever been in a Cherokee, you want to talk about a sparse interior and like all the plastics crack and all the speakers go out and those things like they're just, they're not the greatest. So when I got into my Nissan, I was like, man, this thing is like a luxury boat and mine's an FE. So like I have the nine speakers and the sub under the seat and like it had an aftermarket double din DVD player in it. I was like, this thing's pimp, man. Like I got everything I need. (laughs) Yeah, mine just has like, mine has the tweeters, the door speakers and that's it. Like I don't have the sub. Um, yeah. I just have an SV as well. It's a 2014 mm-hmm. SV. Uh, yeah. When I bought mine, it was just, you know, standard. It had uh, no fog lights in it. I put the fog lights <laughs> into it. Um, I uh, did the two and a half, I did the two inch le- uh, leveling kit. I'm sorry, not lift. I did the leveling kit. I did the 1.5 inch, 1. inch spacers. Um, so yeah. that's, that's the most that I've had to mod. But, you know, like we were talking you got family, you got responsibilities and stuff. It's hard to put all the money you'd like to. And it's funny with the FFC, I see so many of the members that have overlanding. Like uh, just one I can think of off the top of my head is over uh, Cody Clifford, Overhand uh, Overland Serenity. His is yeah. full tail overlanding, and he's done a lot of expeditions. And I'm in awe of the stuff that he's done. And then you have uh, Jacob House with his Xterra and how built yeah. that thing is. Um, that thing's beautiful. Yeah, there's, uh, oh, man, who else? Uh, Logan Sadler. He's just completely rebuilt his frontier. And he's done all the wrench work himself. And that thing nice. is just amazing. Like, he's, that truck is the epitome to me of, you know, built, not bought. You know, it's just, yeah. it's, it's a great truck. And I envy and I I love that the work that these guys put into them, and I, I'm very, very proud that they're a member of the club, and they represent the club well. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like, I just, I, I see this stuff, like I said, you going camping, stuff like that, and I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. I miss that so much, being yeah. able to explore and be on your own and go do stuff. And, yeah, it, it, it's great, you know, you know it's going to sound bad. It's great to have the family, but sometimes you just want to get out by yourself, and you just want to, Live. Yeah. Now your wife can never watch this episode. Yeah, I should yell at me anyway. I'm sure she hears me. <laughs> well, that's, there's pros and cons, right? When you've got the little tiny babies, like there's there's fun with the baby stuff. I we finally hit. So like my youngest is seven now, and my oldest is ten. And like 
I'm training to do the dishes and I'm pretty before too long they're gonna be mowing a yard and doing some other stuff but so now I'm finally here like I've had the Xterra for four years and when I bought it it was literally my pitch to the wife was it's practical it's four-wheel drive I can drive it in the winter it's still fun it's a Nissan yeah. but it took some some convincing <laughs> well that's the thing too like when I originally bought mine I wanted the Pro 4X but you know yeah. my pop. And I couldn't mm -hmm. find the Pro 4X at the right deal that I wanted. And then I couldn't get the Desert Runner at the, the right deal that I wanted. Oh. And I couldn't get the SB 4x4 at the deal that I wanted. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'll get the SB. But I, it, you know, it, come hell or high water, my next one is going to be a four-wheel drive. And it's funny because I have certain people around me. They're like, you live in Florida. Why do you need a four-wheel drive? I'm like, have you seen what my <laughs> club does? I'm like, I, yeah. I want to be there every step of the way and do that stuff. And, <laughs> You know, right. and like we were talking earlier too, um, that SB two wheel drive, I catch a lot of hell about it from people, but that <laughs> Nissan has made it through stuff that I've had four wheel trucks that have not made it through. And, okay. you know, and I'm not a mechanic by any means necessary, but it's just something about the Nissans. Those trucks are just so compatible with everything. And yeah. like we were talking to, people complain about the interior, the turning radius, whatever it may be. <laughs> I will put that truck next to a Tacoma or a Colorado or the Ranger. And I guarantee <laughs> you at the end of the day, that, that Nissan is going to outlast that, that other brand. Yeah. And at what, half the price, two thirds of the price. Like exactly. that's the amazing. And I know thing. like I was watching David and David was talking about how, you know, people are complaining that Nissan's prices are raising with the new vehicle, but that's to be expected. If you want right. more, you've got to pay more. We all understand that. Right. But you can't stop people from complaining. We get that. But You're if, right. you, if you want that locker, if you want that four-wheel drive package, if you want that, you're going to have to spend the money. That's the only way that Nissan is going to compete with right. Toyota. And, the, the and, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a win-win, lose-lose situation. We all know that. Yeah. Well, and look at what a Tacoma costs anyway, you know, like if you want to really compare apples to apples, take a fully loaded, you know, Pro 4X uh, Frontier and put it next to a Tacoma and they're still thousands of dollars apart, especially a two or three year old one. Holy crap. Yeah. I mean, you're talking 10, well, not tens, but probably what, five to eight grand difference, I bet, between those two yeah. trucks at least. And it's ironic because one of the guys that I work with, he has a Tacoma. He has like a 2018 Tacoma, whatever it was. And I always call that one the bubble gum Tacoma because the bottom bumper sticks out so far, you know. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that meme on Facebook or whatever. But we no. I got in and I, I was riding with him one place and I saw it and I'm like, man, like everything is like, yeah, the, the Frontier has a lot of plastic in it. We, the Xterra has plastic in it. But to yeah. me, like I was looking at the Tacoma and I'm like, I bet I could push on that and I could break it. You know, it's just there's. <laughs> To me, it doesn't seem like there's the durability. And, and, you know, I guess it depends on how well you maintain your vehicle, but I, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a fan of Tacoma. And sorry, Tacoma people. Yeah, no, that's like, I, I like Toyotas. And again, when I looked at my Xterra, I did look at like Forerunners at the same time. And I was like, okay, I don't know. I don't like how they look as much because I like that the Xterra, to your point, like we talked about earlier, boxy and kind of aggressive and trucky. Mm -hmm. um, and the Tacomas of that era, like the late 90s, early 2000s, were kind of like bubbly, like a little bit softer on the edges and stuff. And I do think they're great trucks, and I do think they go for hundreds of thousands of miles. That's fine. Yeah. But I was looking at like four to six-year-older forerunners with 150 to 200,000 miles on them that were the same price as my 05 Xterra with under a hundred thousand miles on it and i was like something doesn't add up here i've got all the tools from all the nissans i've had and it literally they're all sort of interchangeable like i've done full suspension you know ball joints brakes um or replace the radiator on mine but i mean like that it makes it sound like there's a lot but all the maintenance stuff right like suspension stuff at 15 16 years is gonna go right like i'm gonna have to replace my ucas and stuff like that but it's it's super simple. It's like everything's a 10, a 14, a 19, a 17, you know, like they're all the same. And I love how easy they are to work on and how much less expensive they are than a comparable Toyota. Yeah. So. You know, that's the thing too. Like uh, we were, we were discussing people earlier and uh, I have a lot of, a lot of members in the Florida Frontier Club that are just, you know, 
they're they're technician gurus, you know, and some of yep. them work for Nissan, some don't. There's a there's a gentleman by the name of Joshua Standard. Like I refer him a lot. If somebody has a mechanical question, he's very very intelligent on how to fix things or do it the the right way. Um, there's a guy that is one of my he I call him like he's he's pretty much my brother. Uh, his name is Sean Breeze in the club. He goes by Frontier SE. Um, okay. I call his nickname is Moose. So he's Moose Mechanics. So uh, he did my lift for me, um, him and Bill Tuccio. They helped me do my leveling kit. Um, they helped me install my light bar. Uh, like I said, I'm not a mechanic by no means whatsoever. Um, they are very, you know, very knowledgeable in how to do things. Um, and that's what I love about my club is that when I formed the FFC, it was okay, let me get people who, you know, who, who love the truck like I do, and let's see where it goes from. And then there that morphed into, there are a lot of people who love the Frontier, who love the Xterra, and I want to bring all of those people together to where they share that love and that passion. And it's funny because, like, if we have our, our club meets and, like, our last one before all this COVID stuff really took off, we were at the Hooters in Orlando, and one of the Hooters in Orlando, and you know you had guys out there putting on a uh, a, a, a bull bar. They helped each other put. The, mm-hmm. One guy sold it. That guy helped him put it on. Um, you know, mm-hmm. this was brand and stuff like that. Like I had a, uh, I had sponsors like Nissan Patch Company with Mike Nope and or Nissan Patch Designs. I'm sorry, Mike. He donated stuff for a raffle and Amazing Decals. Mark Mays. He de- donated stuff. And, uh, you know, I would shout them out and I was like, you know, or D4 graphics, you made the, the Florida Frontier Club hats. Um, yeah. They would do raffles, they'd pitch in and we would raffle those off to people. And it's great watching that. And it's like, and I know it sounds kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but you look at it, and you're like, I brought all that together by bringing all these people together. And that like, and it's not like trying to be, you're not trying to make yourself feel better, but you're just, you're happy because you see all these people come mm-hmm. together that would have otherwise never known of each other without that club, without that, yeah. you know, brother mentality. And uh, with the females that I don't think get the recognition of our club, um, there's some of the females in there that they've done the wrench work themselves. And they're very educated yeah. and very smart on how to do stuff. And some of them know more than the guys, which is great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's just, uh, it's just great watching all the people come together and they share that same passion. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that was going to be kind of my next question was like, so like, why you like what, what, what clicked in your mind that you're like, I need to do this. Like what made you start the club? Well, okay. Like I went back to the, to going back to where I bought the truck. And then I was Mm -hmm. like, you know what, what can I do with this truck? What can I what can I do who's not a mechanic? I am better with electrical than I am with anything else. So what can I do that is easy that I can do to update my truck or to modify the truck, whatever? And yeah. barring that before that, I hadn't given a damn about modifying vehicles or anything like that other than radios. <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, all right, let me look on here. And I found, I think it was Nissan Frontier Enthusiast or uh, something like that. I think it was Nissan Frontier Enthusiast. I saw it and I started reading people's posts and what they had done and what was capable of being done. So I was like, there's nothing in Florida where I live that represents Nissan. So I was like, all right. So I just, I was thinking, I was like, what can I do? I was like, ah, order Frontier Club. What the hell? You know, whatever. I made it. And then I got a couple of members that found it somehow, whatever the case may be, and they found it and they joined. And then we started talking, and I think it was like maybe 10, 12 people, something like that. Yeah. And we were sharing different ideas on what to do. And I was like, you know what? This is something that, you know, it's, it's growing on me, and I, I want to run with it. So I came up with a rough draft of like a decal of Florida State logo and some stuff like that. And I was like, okay, I want to stay with the Nissan Nissan uh, font, and I want to stay with that, and I'll put Frontier Club in there, and obviously Florida is enough to say, you know, Florida, which is funny because I had some people go, well, what state is it in? 
Florida. <laughs> but uh, I'm like, okay, so I did that, and then it, you know, within like I don't know a month or two, it bloomed, and I had 200 people, and I was like, holy crap, this is really taking off. And then a month later, I remember the Frontier Xterra Titan Squad came up in California with Ray Cabrera, and he did his worldwide and everything. And we started bouncing ideas off each other, and we just talking. And I tried to help him, and he tried to help me. And I brought Ray in as a as a member as well. And he was actually the first member outside of Florida that came in. Hmm. And then there was uh, Mike Nope and Mark Mark Mays of Amazing Decals. Um, they they all help out. I don't think Mark's a member, but Mark helps out with doing the Nissan. And ironically, with the Nissan patches, I had found amazing decals and patches, and I was like, "Hey, why is there no Nissan stuff? Why is there only this Toyota?" Patch? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was like, "Well, I've been meaning to make Nissan, but nobody had contacted me about it." So I, yeah. I asked him, and then he started making patches, and then Ray started having him make patches, and then right. it just progressed. And then you know, Mike showed up with all his stuff, and it just it bloomed but going back to creating the nissan thing it was just i don't know it was like something that sparked inside me and i was like man i love this truck yeah it could be yeah. bigger in the interior you know it could have the lockers you know standard <laughs> you know whatever but nissan seems like compared to nissan and any other truck i've ever had or any other car nissan seems like even at the at a difficult problem, it's easy mm -hmm. to fix. And if yeah. you can't fix it yourself, there's somebody that can get you there and help you work through it. And you don't have to have a hundred dollar diagnostics test or a, or a, you know somebody trying to say, okay, well it's this and it's not this. So Nissan mm -hmm. just seems easier to fix and. And, and 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 modify than it is with Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, whatever. That's just my opinion. But yeah. I don't know. I just there's something that I like. I drive my truck, and I, I thought about it the other day. I'm like, man, I, I want a Pro 4X so bad. And I drove it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna miss this SB when it goes. I love this yeah. truck so much that when it goes, it's there's gonna be a part of me that's just gone because I don't have that yeah. perfect truck anymore. <laughs> Yep. Sorry, but that was very okay. long and well now. No, no, that's perfect. Well, I like it too. Like, I feel like the same as you, like they are very easy to fix, but also like, so I've had, I had a Pontiac, I had the Dodge. Um, my parents had Chevy's, Chrysler's, Dodges for a long time. Um, and so I've driven them all. And then like, I worked in dealerships for years. Like while I was in college, I worked in dealerships. When I got out of college for like the first year or two, I worked in dealerships. So I've driven probably like hundreds of different cars and like, they just, I don't know what it is, but Nissan has like a quirkiness and like a soul to them. And it's different. I don't know why it is like, like I told you that story of the, like the gen one Xterra and like all the Chevy Dodge and Ford full size trucks parked next to it. we live, you know, I live in Indiana. He lived in Indiana. We got a bunch of snow and I had to move these things out. And like, you know, the Chevy's like, there's nothing wrong with them. They're fine vehicles, right? I feel like they're way less reliable. That's just my opinion. But yep. um, no offense, guys that drive those trucks. I know that that's not all of them, but just in, from a percentage standpoint. But like, there's just something about them. They just sort of felt like they were just working really hard to get out. And then that Xterra was just like, whoop, just went right up exactly. and out of it. And we, we came it's up crazy. With, uh, I think it was in uh, March of shit 14 or no not 14 march of 15 we came up to indiana and there was you know relatively a little bit of snow on the ground or whatever and i drove that front mm -hmm. there just tore right through and it's funny i come back to florida and tell my buddy i'm like man i took that nissan up to indiana and handled perfect i'm like i'm mm -hmm. when i had my s10 and my ford and my explorer pickup truck i was all mm -hmm. over the road in that thing Granted, yeah. you know, a little bit more power in the 302 than the 4.0, but at the same point, yeah. like that that 4.0, man, that thing. When I lived in, when we were going back through Tennessee, and I lived in Tennessee, and I had my Dodge in Tennessee, and then drove through Tennessee, I went through the same places that I lived in Tennessee. That Nissan yeah. made it up that mountain like it was nothing, nothing. Yeah. So I just, I you know, I I, I love that Nissan. Yeah, they're great trucks. Um, so you mentioned the Facebook group. So you guys are at like, well, like 700-ish now? 700 or 701 now. We were at like 703, but I think 
you know how that is. People drop out or whatever. Uh, with the yeah. with the Facebook page, uh, to be a member of the Florida Frontier Club, you have to have Florida plates. You have to live inside of Florida unless otherwise approved by me. Um, <laughs> you have to have, either have I won't a tell anyone. Frontier or a Nissan Xterra. <laughs> You're the exception because you run the APO, and plus, you know, <laughs> I'm a little biased or a loser. So, feel very special. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love everything the APO is about. Like, that teaches people. <laughs> you learn so much from your channel, and it's just it's amazing. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and especially with like Nissan Nation podcast, like David Boyd and Daniel Gruber's guys are amazing. Yeah. And like, Dude. I, I've talked to David quite a bit and like I bugged him about that Frontier release oh, yeah. for months and <laughs> you know cause of course like anybody I wanted to be the first person that could show that in the club you know but mm -hmm. I understand that you know I understand why David held on to that photo for so long and I understand the reasons why he held on to that photo but yeah. uh, it's funny like if if there's something Nissan related that I want to know I'll ask David <laughs> because I know oh, yeah. he's going to have the inside. Um, <laughs> I don't always get the answer that I want, but I know that he knows, so I, I push him. Right. It. Um, and then, uh, like, if I want to learn, like, you know, what should I take with me? If, if I ever do get the chance to go camping with my truck and do something, where, what should I do? You know what? I'm going to go to APO, and I'm going to watch those <laughs> videos, and I'm going to get some insight on stuff because Jason Fletcher – he knows because he does it. Um, I trust, you know, those videos more than I do anybody else's. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, it, it's funny, like we were talking earlier too, like, you know, the, the main videos that I watch on YouTube when I'm logged into either my account or the Florida Frontier YouTube account, which needs a lot of work, but I appreciate anybody who subscribed. Thank you very much. But I'll link to it below. Uh, <laughs> If uh, if I watch those, I try to watch APO, I try to watch NPC, I try to watch Nissan Nissan Production, I try to watch anything that's Nissan related, um, you know, just to, to to gain the knowledge or to say, you know, hey, I didn't know that, that's a good idea, you know, maybe I'll try that or maybe I'll look into yeah. that product or, or whatever. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so your YouTube channel, you just mentioned it, and you said that you, you're trying to work on it, right? You've got some goals for it. What are, what are you kind of thinking for it? Um, I have one guy, uh, Julio Rio. He's been the latest one that's been uploading videos to the uh, FFC YouTube. I, by no means, am good with videography or video editing or anything like that. And I wish I was because I would love so much more for the channel to get bigger and show more of Florida and nissans as a, as a whole um but i just i'm looking like if there's anybody out there who has a frontier or an Xterra or if you're a member of the club and you're willing to want to help out and pitch in on that i'm all for that um just message me and let me know um but i i would like it to you know to get bigger and feature more of florida even if it's not in florida uh pennsylvania california you know, wherever, <laughs> uh, Tennessee, right. I, I guess I'm hitting on those three again, um, California, anywhere that there's a Nissan, anybody that has a passion for Nissan, if you want to send those videos, I will, you know, gladly upload those and give you a shout out, um, you know, link your information, whatever the case may be. Um, I, I just want people in Florida, especially to, to understand that there is an outlet for your Frontier or your Xterra, uh, to 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 be known and known that there is a passion about Nissan. Um, when I started the when I started the YouTube, it wasn't. It was kind of the same way. It was on a whim, like yeah, nobody's gonna pay attention to this, you know, whatever. Um, and we had discussed certain entities that used to be part of the YouTube that are no longer part of it, which it, it it's it's sad, uh, but you know how things happen. Um, I would uh, I would love for it to get bigger, but my main focus is on the club and the yeah. the the Instagram basically. The Instagram is all about frontiers and exteriors worldwide, showing people love, respect. Uh, as you've seen, I've given many a features yeah. on people from here to Canada to 
you know, overseas, where, you know, wherever. Um, just that passion for Nissan and seeing people explore is just amazing. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll put links to all these below, guys. So as you're listening, podcast or on YouTube, go down in the description below and find these, these links to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera. Do you have anybody else that you want to shout out? Uh, well, with inside the club, which are honorary members, of course, you and all things overlanding. Um, <laughs> like I said, you know, I told you in my downtime, like, you know, I've got some time off work right now with the, the baby came, the, our son that was born on the 3rd of June. Yeah. Um, when I'm, you know, I have my downtime, I'm sitting there holding him. I watch all things overlanding. I watch new Sunday suggestions, <laughs> Nissan patch designs, uh, basically anything associated with Nissan. Um, I, uh, I, I mentioned him earlier, just people with inside the club, there's Bill Tuccio, who's been a, a long, long, long time member of the FFC, uh, Sean Breeze, uh, my admins that helped me run the club, Chandler Wright, Sean Breeze, Bill Tuccio. Uh, I have, you know, there's, there's so many like members that are just, loyal and focused on the club and helping the club and I if I sit here listening listing them it would take take all night um so to those people who are very very loyal they're active in the club and you know they they contribute and and do stuff contribute I guess I should say um <laughs> you know thank you um thank you for the members who are in the FFC who just you know make it what it is and uh, going back to what we were speaking on earlier with it being on Facebook, I get a lot of, uh, get a lot of hate about it's a group, it's not a club because you don't charge fees, you don't do this, you don't do that. I will never charge a fee for somebody who wants to be in the Frontier Club. Uh, something to keep in mind is something I'm trying to come up with is for the Xterra members of the FFC, Eventually, you're going to see a new design, which somehow incorporates the Xterra into the Florida Frontier Club logo. Uh, it's having, you know, not the best drawer in the world, so it's something I'm working with. Um, I have a guy I want to give a shout out to who makes my decals and my designs. His name is Jason Newton of Riz Graphics. Um, he is the only one that is allowed and permitted to make my decals. Um, he's very, very good. He's, he's ran his business for I think, well over 20 years. Um, so if you're looking for a decal, you go on Facebook and look up for his graphics. Um, he's very, very, you know, very, very good. Um, and he's affordable too. He doesn't try to rip you off. Um, so, with that being said, too, I guess uh, if you know somebody out there with a Frontier and Xterra and they're on social media, point them to the FFC. Uh, point them yeah. to the ACO. Point them to the NPC. Point them to Nissan Nation Production. Right. Because in my opinion, and that's not, you know, you know grease in the pipe here, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> those, are your, those are your best outlets for true Nissan stuff. Those are the people that have the most passion yeah. about Nissan that aren't going to fill you full of smoke and uh, <laughs> give you a bunch of garbage. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, and, you know, I mean, I know in all my Instagram posts and stuff, I tag all them, but like in this video too, specifically, I'll tag, you know, Mike No, uh, Nissan Patch Club and, and NNP, the, the Nissan Nation Productions folks, not podcast anymore, because um, they're all good folks. And there's, they do have a ton of good content, so definitely check them out as well. So, yeah, cool. and the thing too with that, and I, a special thanks to Mike Note because Mike has, Mike has went above and beyond of anything that I would have ever. Yeah, experienced. for me too. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like he, uh, my last raffle, Mike sent a package. I swear that I was, I opened up the box and I'm like. You, I, I immediately wrote him. I was like, you did not have to do this. <laughs> like, I felt like, like I offered to pay him for stuff. And Mike said, no, no, just you right. know, your name out there. Do what you got to do. And 
for Mike will forever be in my debt for that. So, and you know, yeah. I'm going to throw a little, uh, a little shout out there too, to, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet or not, but the ATO patch, the first patch, by oh. the lady, that thing is badass. So <laughs> if you haven't bought one and they're still available, you should buy one because those things are amazing. They're still available. Yeah. Go there will be a link one. to that blue as well. I'm telling you, go buy one. If you're into patches, go buy one. Those things yep. are sick. And the detail in that thing is amazing. So. I was kind of surprised because that was a tall order. That, they had some small letters in it, but they did a yeah. good job. Well, I, I you, you saw the video I sent you and Mike the other day of my, my roof. And, you know, that's <laughs> not even half of all the patches I have. And, I like, I actually just got another one today from Lower 48 Outlanders. Uh, Nate Flicks F Edge. All right. Nate oh. FX, I'm sorry, Eldridge, he uh, he runs one on there. He has some Nissan patches on there, as well as, uh, oh, man, Ricky Ignacio, if I'm saying that right. He has uh, he has uh, some Nissan patches that are really nice, too, and amazing de decals and patches, Mark Mays. Uh, Mark, actually, it was funny because I did the same thing with Mark. I saw nothing but Toyota patches, and I contacted him just <laughs> as being spiteful and was like, why is there no new stuff? Why is there only Toyota? This is crap. And he said the same thing. He's like, I was going to make more Nissan patches, but nobody had reached out to me. And then <laughs> I had him do my truck. Well, actually not my truck, but it was uh, an ex member. He had a blue frontier who no longer has it. Somebody with a uh, no license decided to T-bone him. But oh, no. uh, the blue Nissan frontier patch you see that looks similar to mine was his. And it was a really uh, that Mark had done of his, and it got made. And then he did he did my uh, welcome to the Sunshine State patch. And nice. Mark has since started making Nissan stuff and Nissan air fresheners and stuff like that. So go check out amazing decals and patches as well. Sweet, cool man. Well, that was that was pretty much all the questions I've got. So like we talked about though, like go down to the description below for sure because there's going to be a ton of links to some awesome. Nissan stuff, so probably a lot of people that are watching this or listening to this are Nissan folks, so definitely check that stuff out. And, you know, thanks to Chris for hanging out with me tonight, man. It was fun. Appreciate it. Oh, and before I forget, go check out Blind Man Overland as well. He's very Yeah, good. I've been seeing him. You've been posting about him. Yeah, Blind Man Overland in Canada, Alberta, he, he has some awesome content on there. So. Awesome. Yeah, I'll put a link to him down below then, too. Cool, man. All right. Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. Uh, anytime, man. And, and, you know, ACO all the way. All right, guys. So that was the interview with Chris. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Again, if you're a Nissan person, I think you probably will. Um, a really neat thing that they're doing down there. I love that they're getting, you know, folks together and, and sort of bringing out, you know, folks that are interested in Nissan Frontiers and Xterras and kind of giving them a place to talk and help each other out. Um, so again, I'll put links in the description to all of their stuff as well. If you're in Florida, you do have to have a Frontier or an Xterra to join the club. And you do need to be in Florida. So if you're listening to this and you're in Florida and you're like, hmm, I wonder if there's a club around, now you know. Click on the link down below. Um, so huge thanks to Chris for taking the time to come and hang out with me. It was a, it was a fun chat for a couple hours while we hung out. Um, so again, thanks to him and thanks to my featured partners. And if you don't already, and you're listening on the podcast, for example, for the first time or watching on YouTube, I have a podcast on all the major podcast channels. I have a YouTube channel where this plays as well. And I have other video reviews and things like that that I do, Xterra specific things. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so check those, uh, those out as well. And uh, then I have a website, allthingsoverlanding.com. There's also a store on there and I sell patches uh, with the logo on them and stickers. So if you guys are into overlanding and you're into patches and or stickers, then you should definitely check that out. Um, so again, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you guys and uh, we'll be back next week.